Hey there guys, Paul here from the engineeringmindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the CAV system to understand the main parts and how it works. CAV stands for constant air volume. It's a type of HVAC air distribution system in buildings where the volume of air supplied is kept constant, but the temperature of the air is varied. CAV is an older design method. We still find this used in existing buildings, but it's less common in newer buildings because VAV systems are now the preferred choice of installation. VAV stands for variable air volume. This method provides superior zone control and reduced energy consumption. By the way, we have also covered VAV systems in detail in our previous video. Do check that out, links can be found in the video description down below. Now, although constant air volume systems are becoming less common in newer buildings, you might still find them being installed in smaller buildings, and that's because they're easier, quicker, and cheaper to install. Although the initial installation cost is lower, the lifetime running cost of the system will potentially be far higher than a VAV system because CAV is less energy efficient. Here we have a simple model of a CAV system for a small office. First of all, we have the main air handling unit, which is located in the mechanical plant room. From this, we have the main supply duct. The fresh ambient outdoor air is sucked into the air handling unit and it is filtered and then heated up or cooled down within the AHU. And then a fan pushes this out down the ductwork to be distributed throughout the building. Coming off of the main supply duct are a number of branches. Each branch has a diffuser at the end. The diffuser has metal fins, which are at an angle to direct the stream of air and distribute this across the room. The air is then circulated around the room and pushes the dirty used air into the return grill. The return grill is typically on the opposite side of the room, sometimes at floor level and sometimes at ceiling level. The placement of the return grill will impact the effectiveness as well as the efficiency of the ventilation system. Various industry bodies will provide guidance on the design of such a system. By the way, you can download a personal copy of this video along with a PDF guidebook. You can store these on any of your devices and use them wherever you need them. I'll leave a link in the video description down below if you'd like a copy. The return grill is connected to the main return duct. This again runs the length of the building and returns the AHU. A separate return fan pulls the air in through the grill and brings this back to the main AHU. This dirty used air can then be rejected from the building, although some designs of AHU allow a portion of this air to be recycled back into the supply stream. Recycling a portion of this air will reduce the energy consumption of the system. This does require some more advanced controls to determine when conditions are right to do so, and some local regulations do not always permit the system to be used. Now, CAV systems do have some limitations, because their supply air temperature is varied, but the volume or flow rate of air being supplied is kept constant. So, while the system is operating, it provides air at a consistent and constant volume and only the temperature of the air changes. Typically, the air is provided at around 13 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but this can be adjusted to suit the needs of the building. Keep in mind that heating or cooling the air does consume a lot of energy, and this increases the operating costs of the building. As I mentioned, the volume flow rate of the entire system, and therefore each room, is kept constant. We have to calculate how much air each room will receive during the design phase. That depends on the size of the room as well as the purpose or what's happening inside each room. For example, a server room is going to require far more cooling than just a storeroom. There are industry guides available which will tell you how to calculate this. Each branch has a mechanical damper, which is manually adjusted during the commissioning to ensure the correct air flow rate as per design. For example, this small room in the center might require just three cubic meters per second, or 6,300 cubic feet per minute, whereas these two larger rooms on either side 
might require 20 to 30 cubic meters or 42,000 to 63,000 cubic feet per minute. The size of the ductwork, the damper, and obviously the AHU fan will let us achieve this. The total system flow rate depends on the size of the building. Perhaps a small building only requires a small flow rate of 30 cubic meters per second, or 63,000 cubic feet per minute. But it could be an old 40 story building with an enormous AHU on the roof, which is pushing air down through the entire building. That's obviously going to be an incredible amount of air moving. Now, one of the main problems with the CAV system is that everything connected to the AHU and the supply duct is classed as one zone. That means all the rooms connected to it will receive the same temperature air regardless of their cooling load. For example, this could be a busy meeting room in the middle of summer. So we have a very large cooling demand with all the solar thermal heat gain, etc. But this room will receive the same temperature air as this little room, which might be a tiny office for one person. That's going to be very uncomfortable for that one person. This means the rooms are not receiving their required cooling demand. That means the system is very inefficient because we're generating a lot of cooling which is simply being wasted because rooms do not require it. The AHU fans will also run at 100% the entire time the system is running. Although you could fit a variable frequency drive to the fan motor and slightly reduce the flow rate at periods of low occupancy. Although keep in mind that this will impact how much fresh air is entering the room. Fitting just a VFD will not convert this system into a variable air volume system. We need a lot more controls, VAV terminals, etc. It does take a lot of time, money and effort to convert a system, but it can be done. Although it might not be economical to convert a system, it depends on the size of the building and the lifespan of both the equipment as well as the building. We have also covered how AHUs work in detail in our previous videos. Do check that out. Links can be found in the video description down below. From this schematical representation of the CAV system, you can see how it's all connected. Notice that all of the rooms are connected to this main duct, and the only form of temperature control is in the main AHU. That means that all of these rooms receive the same temperature air at a constant volume. As I mentioned earlier in the video, some AHUs have the ability to recirculate a portion of the air back into the supply stream. This will save energy, but we don't always find this used, or perhaps local building regulations do not allow this. Coming back to the rooms, the CAV design would work very well if all of the rooms had a similar cooling demand. Say the building was underground or just had minimal solar heat gains, and each of the rooms had a consistent heat load which didn't vary too much. In this case, a VAV system would be ideal, although it is difficult to change the design if the purpose of the room ever changed. Sometimes we have multiple CAV systems within a building. This will give us some zone control. This way, each CAV system is providing a different temperature air to suit the individual zone. Otherwise, again, every room will receive the same temperature regardless of what's happening inside the room. A possible solution to this is to install terminal reheaters. These are usually found just before the diffuser in the ceiling. But these are typically electrically powered heaters, although they could also be from your hot water system. These units will heat the local incoming air up to a higher temperature to suit the individual room. But obviously that is very energy inefficient because you're already cooling the air down in the main AHU, which costs a lot of money. Then we're also paying to heat the air back up again to suit the room's local conditions. So we're wasting energy and money on both cooling and then heating. Typically, the air temperature for this system is supplied at the coldest temperature possible, which satisfies the room with the largest cooling load. So, for example, this room might have the largest cooling load, so the system provides the air temperature to suit this particular room. These other rooms would have to use reheaters because the air is going to be too cold. You might come across dual duct CAV systems. 
These are very uncommon to see these days, but some older buildings will still use them. With this system, we have two ducts running along and supplying the rooms. One of these ducts will be carrying cold air, and the other will be carrying warm air. The air streams are then mixed by some dampers to suit the individual room. The air is then collected in the main return duct and sent back to the main AHU to either be rejected to atmosphere or even recycled. Now, this system does provide an improved thermal control compared to the standard single supply duct VAV system, but there is little control of humidity. Again, it's not very energy efficient either. As you're supplying air through two streams, you're going to have higher frictional losses in the ductwork, which the fan is going to have to overcome. You are also unnecessarily heating and cooling air. If you have one of these systems and you want to make it more energy efficient, then you should ensure that a temperature reset is enabled on the system. This will monitor the demand and reduce the hot air stream temperature to the lowest acceptable temperature, meanwhile also increasing the cold air stream to the warmest acceptable temperature. That way we're minimizing our heating and cooling energy demand and thus our operating costs. Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning heating, ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration engineering, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.